How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good one so far. We've got a really interesting one today. This is Magic Power Language Symbol by Patrick Dunn. A Magician's Exploration of Linguistics. For those of you who are into the more formulaic, intellectual, and noetic aspects, linguistic aspects of ceremony and magic, I think this one's going to be very interesting for you. When I first started reading this, it reminded me of another work that I had read by Alvin Boyd Kuhn called The Esoteric Structure of the Alphabet. And in grabbing this book as a reference, I noticed that the first page of the former addresses the concept of abracadabra, and the last page of the latter <laughs> does the same thing. Now, whether this is a, a coincidence or just a coincidence, um, I'm not sure. But uh, let's get into this one. I've got much more bookmarks in this one than I normally do. I'm trying not, not even to even squeeze it because I don't want to damage the spine from all of the index cards. Typically, one card means a minute or two per... Um, yeah, each card typically means a minute or two. Uh, so typically, I will put anywhere from 7 to 12 bookmarks in a book, and that makes the video about 15 to 25 minutes long. This one, this one has almost 20. So forgive me if I don't delve too deeply into the dialogue of, of this one. This is less about ceremony and ritual and more about actually priming your perspective. This is a work of philosophy. This will help you, especially if, if, you're, if you're unsure about writing invocations and evocations, if you're unsure about what words of power to use and your particular practice, I think this one is, is going to be very beneficial for you. Let's get started. Typically, I will start with the table of contents. So let's do that, but let's do that very briefly. There is chapter one, <clears throat> which is the theory of symbols and the practice of magic. Chapter two is all about language, the bridge of mind and matter, which is a very interesting concept, language being the bridge of mind and matter. That's, that's a very powerful perspective to behold. Chapter three is incantation, the power of poetry. Those of you who are longtime followers of the channel know how much I love poetry. Chapter four, which starts on page 67, <laughs> which is a very special number, recognizes the, the interesting elements of sigils, glyphs, and characters, the alphabets of magic. Chapter five is from Babel or Babel to Enochian and the search for the primal language, which is potentially related to what I often call twilight tongue. Chapter six is about speaking in tongues, which is also very much related to what I call twilight tongue or the unconscious undulations of the uvula. <laughs> I love alliteration so much, especially when it's spontaneous like that. Um, chapter 6, Speaking in Tongues, Glossolalia, and Barbarous Words of Invocation. Chapter 7 is the Kabbalah, the, Kab the, the Kabbalah, or the Kabbalah, the Grammar of Number. Chapter 8 is Mantras, Formulas of Power. Chapter 9, Magical Narrative, Metaphor, Myth, Ritual and Thurgy. Chapter 10 is Self Talk, the Janus or Janus of Words. Appendix 1, which is at the very, very, very end, as appendices often are, 
is uh, Liber Numerorum, a dictionary of English gematria. So those of you who are familiar with, um, with gematria um, of, of Hebrew uh, connotation, uh, there is also an English one. We have Appendix 3, sorry, Appendix 2, which is the Hebrew alphabet. Appendix 3, suggested correspondences between the tarot and the English alphabet. Append appendix 4 is application. And then there's a glossary, bibliography, and index. So I am actually going to read the introduction here because it does relate to some interesting concepts. <clears throat> did I have a water? I do. I did and I do. Excuse me. Make sure you're all staying hydrated as well. Introduction. If you're looking for magical words, you really can't do better than abracadabra. No one really knows what abracadabra means, if it ever meant anything. Its earliest mention is in a recipe for an amulet. Why this word, out of countless words engraved on charms, talismans, and tablets from the ancient world, survived as a mystery as well. Why do stage magicians not shout Abrasix or Abalatha? Why Abracadabra? I fantasize that perhaps the word itself ensured its survival and popularity. Perhaps it serves as a reminder that real magic, no matter what stage magicians do with their trickery, still exists. Abracadabra could provide the key to magic. That is to say, the key. <laughs> One possible origin for the word is an Aramaic phrase, avracadabra, or avracadabra. This sentence means, I create as I speak. Aramaic is a language closely related to Hebrew, Jesus when he spoke to friends and relatives, and God spoke Aramaic. The verb avra, I create, is an Aramaic cognate with the verb evra in Hebrew. But Hebrew makes a distinction between different types of creation. If you make something from nothing, you say evra. But if you make something from something else, you say Etzor, or Etzor. So Abracadabra is saying, I create something from nothing when I speak, just as my words come from nothing. Yet in the relevant cosmologies, only God can create out of nothing. Evra as a verb for God to use, not humans. Therefore, to say abracadabra is to speak an incantation of apotheosis. If you'd like to read the rest of that, then perhaps consider looking at this book. Chapter 1 is the theory of symbols, the practice of magic. The next section that is interesting is related to the physicality of sound. Another interesting subject relates to the actual pronunciation of the words. I'll show you a little diagram here. Study that all you want. I'm not going to spend much time on it because this video is already at 10 minutes. Somehow. <laughs> the next interesting section is on the characteristics of incantation. Allowing you to be able to write your own incantations. If you're able to transmute the lead into gold or extract the lead or the gold precipitate from the solution. 
if you're able to drop it into a, a precipitate that is. Another interesting section is on metaphor. Another interesting section is on the importance of repetition. I was raised in, in a church and that actually had a great pastor. It was, it was the stepfather forcing me to go to the church that was um, less than enjoyable. Um, the pastor of the church was great. He was awesome. Uh, many said he was a man of God, but I, I see him as a truly inspired human. I think he found whatever facet he could to speak truth and, and as loud a decibel and as true a manner as he could, and that manifest in his life as being the pastor of a church. You know, do what thou wilt. But one of the points that he made about the Bible in particular, but I think he was also trying to drive it home about life as well, he would constantly say, if it's repeated, it's important. And that has, that has significance with the unconscious as well. And seeing as this is a channel about the unconscious, that has relevance. Moving on. The next interesting subject is chapter 4, which relates to sigils, glyphs, and characters. The alphabets of magic. The next interesting section is about theory. But some of you might disagree with some of this. Some of you might completely agree. I'll read a small, a small section of it. This book says, In magic, the practice of magic is paramount. Theory is secondary. Magic is above all a practical thing. And the, the fictions show that. They are for practical, if rather lamentable, goals. Overcoming an enemy, winning a bet, getting a lover, getting rid of a lover. They existed alongside a more rarefied form of magic, thurgy, which was concerned with identifying and communing with the gods. So I don't know how some of you feel about that. If you'd like to, if you'd like to let me know how you feel, um, what about what is paramount in magic? Um, some say that theory is paramount. Some say that um, being tactical is paramount. We have then the invention or discovery of Enochian. The use of Enochian. We have personal attempts to achieve a primal language. This is a very interesting section. I'm not going to get too into it. But know that there is something about creating a personal primal language in it. The next section, chapter 6, is speaking in tongues. And then within that, there is techniques of glossolalia or glossolalia, which essentially teaches you how to talk in tongues, if you don't know already. Then there is... A section about, within that section about glossolalia or glossolalia, um, there's three steps. Preparation, silence, and speech. Then we get into invocation. We get into enchantment. We get into an interesting section about how any given number can be represented in manifold ways. For example, because order doesn't matter, one could represent 12 by writing YB, or Yod Bet, or BY, Bet Yod. But one could also indicate by writing Vav Vav, or Chet Dalit, or even Aleph, 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 Aleph. I'm not sure if that was 12 or not. As long as the values of the letters used add up to 12. That's an interesting concept. Maybe some of you don't know how to use that. Maybe some of you do. Then we get into a section about practical Kabbalah, like Gamatria, Notarikin, Tamura, Tzeruf, how to test your experiences, mantras as formulas of power, 
activating a mantra and using um, seed mantras or bijus, essentially. They don't call them that in here, but that is somewhat what they are. Um, for spirit, we have hum. For fire, we have rum. For, or sorry, for spirit, we have hum. For wind, we have pum. For fire, we have rum. For water, we have bum. And earth, we have lum. <laughs> and then, um, looks like Chinese, if I remember correctly. For fire, we have si. For wind, for, sorry, for wind, we have na. For fire, we have si. For water, we have lu. And for earth, we have ke. So you could even turn that into a mantra of nasilu ke. If you, if you wanted to, to balance out those elements with a magical formula. The next section is on magical formula. The next interesting section is on making it up. Then we have magical narrative, metaphor, myth, ritual, and thurgy. Then we have an actual section on thurgy. Then we have a chapter called self-talk. The Janus of Words, or Janus of Words. If you don't know who Janus is, look it up. It has a direct relation to the unconscious and Thalmael. Then we have a section on anti-magic words, which is an interesting concept. Words like should, ought, and must. And the reference here is, when we say should, either I should or they should, we're pretending there's an objective standard regarding what we should or shouldn't do. And this is a whole section, but that is sort of the primer for it. Then we have am, is, are, was, were, be, then being. Some of you might remember that. Then into the appendices. Liber Numerorum, the Dictionary of Gematria. We have sections here that show the, the gematria of certain words in English. So, and then Appendix 4 actually gives some applications. So. Definitely some utility for those of you who have already been through a hundred books and seen all of the ceremonies and you're like, meh, none of these ceremonies are working for me. Or meh, none of these gods or god names are working for me. None of these, what is, what is going on? There is a chance that perhaps the philosophy, the structure, the formula behind why these gods have the names that they have, why these rituals use the geometries that they utilize, perhaps that is what you are needing to study, what you're needing to learn, what you're needing to brush up on. And this is probably the most linguistically relevant book that I could recommend. Originally, I would have recommended The Esoteric Structure of the Alphabet, but after finishing this one, it covers the same concepts in, in a more deep way. So, if you, if you only want to spend 40 pages researching something like this, read The Esoteric Structure of the Alphabet. If you want a really deep delve dive, into the linguistics of magic and you want to learn how to create your own magical languages if you want to learn how to talk in twilight tongue um because i haven't made a video still <laughs> about that this is an excellent reference let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns below i hope you have a good rest of the day good rest of the week you already know by now. I hope you have a good rest of the month and year as well. <laughs> Take care and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.